pandemic and the extent to which we can educate the public I think that can raise public trust and confidence and hopefully increase support for those efforts, financial and, and otherwise. Um, but, you know, is this really represent a change in Dr. Oz's approach on the show? I think that's, that's another question. I mean, he's trying to change the image of his show. And, you know, I, I, don't, I don't have a problem with him doing that. I think if I were in his position, I'd probably be doing the same thing. But does it change that inherent conflict that he faces between being a, a medical doctor and... and uh, you know, being an entertainer? No, it does not. So I hear you saying he has done good, he has a platform where he is reaching people with a public health message that has positive impacts, and I also hear you saying sometimes he's a quack and he says things that are not backed up by science. Would you like to see him just behave a little more responsibly, or do you think that celebrity doctors like Dr. Oz should not be using their medical credentials as a platform for entertainment at all? I do think that there's a lot more that these um, kinds of celebrity docs can do I think that they can present much more balanced views. I think they can point out that some of the information that they're presenting, for example, about the latest diet, are not backed up by solid evidence. And that, you know, these are things that are still being investigated and not present them as if they're, they're cure-alls. I think there just needs to be a much more balanced presentation of information to the public. And I think a lot of people are hungry for that and would accept it. Would that increase his ratings? Probably not. It might actually de decrease them a little bit. But he'd be, he'd be doing more of that public service that I think he needs to achieve. Professor W. Douglas Evans is director of the Public Health Communication and Marketing Program at the Milken Institute School of Public Health at George Washington University. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. something from me and I'll seek it out more. Vasquez has already found one book, Catcher in the Rye. Now he wants to find all six. He let me join him on his search. Our first stop, the Proper Topper, a small shop near DC's DuPont Circle. Hi. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. We're looking for a band book. We <laughs> unfortunately have all been found. We're getting some more. Store manager Tara McCready suggested we head over to Kramer's, a nearby bookstore and restaurant. We had a dead end there, too. I can see if we're supposed to get any more in. Okay. The scavenger hunt has been more popular than anyone expected, said Kramer Books events manager, Sarah Baleen. She thinks it's those attention-grabbing covers. And so you want to pick up a book that says smut on the cover, and you open it and you see that it's Catcher in the Rye, and it makes you think, well, I don't, you know, consider this smut, or why would someone else consider it smut? Okay. We decided to cheat a little bit. After all, what are smartphones for? So they were expecting us at the next stop, Upshur Street Books. So you have some still? Yes. Would you like me to show you where they are? No, I think we have to find them, okay. right? So <laughs> it didn't take long. Vasquez spotted one right away. So what does it say? This is filthy, trashy sex novel. <laughs> what is it? So this particular one is A Separate Piece by John Knowles. Wow. Moments later, Vasquez found another book. 
native son, my 